hot day. The Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. What a great way to start a week. Been a member of Rob's party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the third party we've all been asking about. The Rob party. Also, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Every second he spends here is one less minute he can dedicate to being a bestselling author. Good morning. And the, <coughs> and the <laughs> world benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off already. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Starting off already, I yeah. see. Yeah, this is how it's going to go. All right. Uh, let's see. We are up to ju uh, June 17, so you are less than a month away from your deadline. Here yeah, I'm pretending it's June 3rd, though. So I write fiction. So How I can, far does I can that do go? This. Isn't, that the, isn't that the opposite way of what you should be pretending? That's pretending you're so, giving yourself more time. I think I'll make it. I, I think I'll. I've, I've turned some serious corners in in the plot. I'm 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 past the contractual number of eighty thousand words. So, um, which really doesn't matter. I mean, the story has to end. So you actually so have, have your a, contract calls <clears throat> for a book that has at least eighty thousand words. Yes. Yes. So, like of the, approximately eighty thousand words. Uh, is it too late to introduce a new hero? Um, no, but I'll tell you what, Bill, you're going to be sorry that you bid on this name. <laughs> it's, you mean uh, I'm not a hero. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, it's not turning out well get, for you. Can I get my money back? <laughs> so, but it's, um, but you're, you're really, um, the Billy Stubblefield, I, I, I hid you under a, a, a diminutized name, but it's the Billy Stubblefield family is, uh, it's tough. Pretty tough. And it doesn't end well for any of you. So it's, uh, um, but you're still alive. You, you're, you're a character. Billy is still alive. You mean in the book or here? Um, well, it, presumably here. <laughs> but in the book, he's, he's, he's still alive. Just because you ignore me, Rob, it doesn't mean I'm not here. I think you got another 50 pages to go. Oh, that's well, nice. That's yeah, good. that's good. That's lasted longer than Rob's character. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, his character was introduced and gone in what three chapters, three, par uh, three paragraphs, three paragraphs. No, I th I think you made it to about 120 pages. Holy oh, that's pretty man. good. Oh, that's yeah. pretty good. That's yeah. longevity. And that book comes out this summer, right? Yeah, next month. Well, two months. <laughs> it's only July in my head, so it comes out in uh, August. Let me just state for the record that you and Height paid handsomely to be murdered, whereas I got killed for free. <laughs> yeah, but you were not a very interesting character. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reflects the real, the real me, you know. And why, why change it for a book? Yeah. <laughs> Our guest in this segment is Travis Bishop, who brought goodies in with him as well. TB, good morning to you. Yeah. Good morning, Rob. How many goodies How did many he bring goodies? in, Rob? Yeah, uh, you're killing me without a knife too. <laughs> killing me. Let me just state he brought that. in one goodie. Well, I mean, it's important that you guys know where you rank. That's and true. I think this shows more than anything else yeah. exactly how you stack up. But in you the have to remember, John Gilstrap pulled out a pretty big knife while That's ago. True. He and did. Pointed it at he you. He did. I yeah, didn't but, point it at him. I pointed it at the very good-looking cake he, that he's but not he sharing. Was, but he, he was holding the cake. <laughs> he, was, he brandished a weapon. Yeah, brandishing. Right? But I know Travis is packing, so you best yeah, be careful. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> What's the safest place in Martinsburg right now? Yeah, it is, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> I like the T-shirt, little Godfather takeoff, the grill father with That's the right. lettering and everything. Yep. Yeah. So instead of uh, uh, leave the gun, take the cannoli, what do you have? What do you say there at uh, your place? Oh, <sighs> Bring it in. Let's get some brisket. Let's do it. <laughs> I like it, man. Yeah. So what have you brought in for me here and, and the guys? I tell you that the ladies down at the cafe are just crushing it with some cool ideas and unique things. Yeah. And uh, they brought one to the restaurant the other day, and they said, here, try this. See what you think. We could, Can we put them on the shelf in the, in the case? And I'm like, sure, let me try it. Oh, my Lord. It's a maple. It's made with black draft bourbon. Um, it's a maple bacon bourbon mini bunt cake. I can't say that two times fast. Maple bacon bourbon mini bun cake. Yeah. They're fantastic. Oh, I'll say. So, okay. And, and I'm sure he'll fight you for it. We're presuming a fact, not an evidence. You say the cafe. <laughs> we haven't really introduced you yet. Uh, just so, which cafe might that be? The Mountaineer Mug and Cafe down at the garage okay. on King. Uh, and you're still in the garage? It, in the cafe, yes. In the cafe, right. still uh -huh. in the garage. Okay, yep. very good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you recently received a large chicken donation. We did. Which is the reason for your invitation on the program Thank today. You. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, we, I know you already do so much for veterans. Uh, we do. Being a veteran yourself, Travis, how much you do for all the veterans in the community. You feed them. You, you look after them. You take care of them. You have do a genuine good heart with what for we got. them. Yep. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so you've got a, another donation that you're looking to help distribute some chicken. Pretty crazy. <laughs> you know, it's a, I get a, uh, AJ's a, a loyal customer, if you will, and friend of the business of the barbecue place in the plaza. And, he called me out of the blue and he said, "Hey, Trav, AJ." I said, "Hey, what's up, buddy?" And he said, "Hey, I got a, I got a timely thing for you if you're interested." And I said, "Sure, what's up?" He said, "My company drives for a large 
you know, food wholesaler, um, Pilgrim's Pride. And he said, look, we got 21 cases of fresh birds that were just harvested yesterday. But they got crushed in, you know, in, in a in shipment, if you will. Well, they can't be distributed because the boxes are kind of, you know, they're accordion style, if you will. Right. Now, they're in bag. They're sealed bags, so they're fresh and everything's fine. And he said, we got to don't we got to get rid of them. Can you handle 21 cases? I said, absolutely. I've got a 20-foot walk-in cooler, plenty of room. He said, absolutely. I'll be there tomorrow. You know, and uh, he dropped them off. And immediately, um, I reached out to Tony Weisberg, which is a good friend of mine who runs a very nice uh, giving um, nonprofit, if you want, Martinsburg. She feeds homeless every week, Friday, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and we immediately called her and uh, said, hey, and AJ didn't even ask for this, but we I already already thought ahead. I immediately out. I, I didn't think about selling them. I want to donate them. I want to pass the blessing on to someone else. So I called Tony. I said, "Hey, can you get me a copy of your 5013C? I would love to give this to Pilgrim's Pride because that way they can write the entire thing off. Because it's being generous. I mean, that's a lot of chicken. That's a lot of birds. About 250 to be exact. <clears throat> so he, he full, said, full bird, a whole birds. My goodness, whole fresh birds. Yeah. Um, so made that happen um we smoked up tony's 50 on thursday and she fed uh 50 birds to the homeless on friday well we still have about 200 birds that we're going to give away uh today is monday right yeah monday Mm -hmm. uh tomorrow at four o'clock tomorrow at four what location um in the berkeley plaza mountaineer meat smokers at 45 monroe street all right so what do you need to do to uh claim one of these just show up Uh, are they frozen no they're fresh they're fresh we're smoking them up and we're going to serve them at four you're going to serve them cooked. Cooked, fresh, Smoked. Ready, ready to go. Yeah, ready yeah, to eat. A, we're going to put up each one in a Ziploc two-gallon bag, if you will. So people just show up. No questions asked. And, you know, we want people to bless others. We want to – it's it's very much a conduit situation. We're all conduit trying to reach other people for better for better good. Um, so you can show up. You can show up and say you, you know people that they don't know or whoever – you can show up and get a couple birds and deliver them to people in need. I'm thinking Tim Greeno at the rescue mission. Yeah, and also C yeah. and C Cap and groups like that. Well, you know, so. and, and and let me say this, and I don't, I want to say this with uh, the right intention is, we want to get this to families. Mm-hmm. We really do. L- trust me, we uh we would love to give these birds to larger organizations that need larger quantities. But I'd like to really bless the individual family because I see it on the social media a lot, on these Martinsburg pages and Hedgesville pages. There's people always needing food. And I'll tell you what, it's impressive to see the community reach out to these people that are anonymous that need food, and they're just they're blessing them. Uh, they're blessing them uh, with this food. Mm-hmm. So I want that to I want that to be the premise of what we do. I want people to privately show up. Uh, and go bless somebody with the chickens, if you will. Yeah, pick up the cooked chicken and take it to a family that you sure. know they're having trouble feeding yeah. the, the kids and everything. And yeah. Whatever. Senior yep. citizens. So we uh, we just donated some to the Boys and Girls Club today, uh, just the other day uh, to Eric Brown and Stacy Bowman. Oh, very nice. Yeah, they picked up, I think, eight or ten to feed the kids. So you're, you're taking on the cost of preparing all these yourself? We are, yes. That's mm-hmm. very generous. So say again where people go to pick these up? Uh, Mountaineer Meat Smokers in the Berkeley Plaza, 45 Monroe Street. And what time? Four o'clock tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right. Four o'clock. Mm-hmm. All right. So we've got a good sized Facebook community right now watching this yeah. Channel 10 live TV audience and our radio audience as well. If you uh, know of somebody, you can show up, pick up a fully cooked chicken for dinner and deliver it to somebody you know. Or if yeah. you need it yourself, eat it yourself. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's what we that's what we want. You know, right. We want people to come and get a blessing. And you know, the Bible's very clear about when you uh, give people food, you give them life. Mm-hmm. Now, if someone wants to pick up some for individuals that cannot come will you allow more than one bird per person correct we okay. are we are we are not going to ask questions if you want to yeah. pick up four birds we know that four birds are going to go to somebody yeah yeah and you know god keeps good score sure. so we just want people yeah. to be genuine in this we want it to go strictly to the needy people that's our that's our intention you well know. okay needy people uh but you're not really asking questions uh, mm-hmm. someone that is not needy. They can come up and pick them up as well. If if they feel like they need a yeah. chicken, that's fine. Good not, okay. I, I want them to be blessed as well. You're not asking questions. Nope. Yeah. Travis, talk about the work you do for veterans. Uh, the, you know, yeah, um, do a lot of uh, lot of connections, if you will, with our local veteran community. Um, Thomas Underwood is a good friend. Uh, he's one of my customers as well. Um, but... 
every Wednesday we host the Vietnam vets um, from the VA. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a peer group that Steve um, Steve's been heading up for over 20 years, and uh, during uh, COVID they were not allowed to be on the property at the VA, and they were not given an alternative place to meet. They kind of had to figure it out on their own, so which is fine. And these guys are overcomers. They 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 found me through another veteran connection, and uh, called me and said, "Hey, can uh, can my group come and meet at your restaurant on Wednesdays because we're not allowed to go to the VA um, for this reason, for COVID?" And I said, "Sure." So um, now, ever since COVID, these guys have been here every Wednesday from 11 to 2, um, and they, and I just love I love sitting behind the wall and just looking out at those guys at the table and listening to the joy and the camaraderie and the stories and just it's very much therapeutic for these for these guys and gals mm -hmm. and any veterans welcome it's not exclusively for vietnam vets but those guys are most mostly retired and uh they get together every every wednesday and have their uh, donuts and coffee and and some barbecue how many people are showing up regularly typically 15 to 20. that's a good group it is a good little group yeah. and uh we uh and we invite any veteran to come and hang out well that's pretty cool i remember when you, you know, kind of started that and yep. it's just uh it's a, it's wonderful to have a place for those folks to go yeah. especially vietnam vets who felt and were so underappreciated in their correct day, right? yeah and i like hearing the uh, vietnam vets talk about um our our our, our current veterans if you will mm -hmm. they're they're happy to see that uh veterans are more well received as they weren't back in 60s and 70s right do you see a lot of younger <coughs> veterans of more recent conflicts showing up at, at we these do. things we do mm -hmm. yeah thomas underwood's one of those uh there's several that come in that are uh, you know like me i'm a golf war vet two tour and uh there's guys my age you know 54 55 and then there's some younger ones that have had you know um, other campaigns uh that have come in so it's building it's pretty cool Tell me about your time at the Grudge, and uh, yeah. did, were you there when it first opened? Were you one of the anchor? We were the facilities. One of the first, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that's working out. Well, we had to pull the barbecue out, mm -hmm. which is just it's a numbers game, and uh, we pulled that out. And yeah. uh, what, what what is the financial arrangement there? I mean, you don't have to get into exact specifics, but I know there's like a general deal that happens. It, it's kind of an incubator for for yeah, startups. And, and the intention is to get <clears throat> you know small businesses involved in in a, in a brick and mortar. Um, and then eventually transfer them to their own brick and mortar. Right. You know, um, it's a it's a new concept for Martinsburg, and it's a, it's a great concept. It really is. It's an amazing building. Diego's built a great place, um, but I think it's it's going to take some time to really get it to where it's functioning on all firing on all cylinders seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's going to be some time involved. And and the deal is they cover the rent and and utilities. It's an all inclusive uh, percentage, if you will, of the. Uh, of the business and they take a percentage of what you sell correct that, that goes to that your covers everything. expenses everything yeah so yeah. If, if you're a new business and you don't have yeah, a lot it, of capital that's the, a great the, the big value is for small business guys that are coming out of either a food truck or they have an idea they want to start up a little small restaurant if you will um let's face it in today's world everything's expensive sure. especially restaurant equipment it's not cheap hoods fryers you know the the ansel system fire suppression there's a lot of refrigeration uh that's all provided for you how's so that's included in the in the rent if you will your the, electric water sewer garbage yeah and then in exchange you give a percentage of your sales correct to, toward the expenses correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah well travis t today you're talking about the chickens but if memory serves when they had floods in southwestern part of Virginia, west virginia a few years ago yes, sir. you were very active in taking food and supplies there as well were you not I, we, we, uh, we, we showed up first. We were there weeks before any, uh, you know, National Guard or state government showed up. We were there weeks before. And, and that was uh, all done with your network of friends. It started yeah. with my, my, my uh, initial post of I'm going by myself. If mm -hmm. anybody wants to go, mm -hmm. you can come with me. And uh, wow, that morning I went to, I'll never forget it. I went to uh, the little cat, little diner down on uh, 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 uh queen street there and uh, i was there at seven o'clock getting some breakfast and i told people in the restaurant i said i'm heading to southern west virginia anybody want to donate anything i'm going to head down there in about you know about four hours i'm heading that way and i got a couple hundred bucks you know and then but when i showed up to my at the time was my my gun shop uh 
that post at f- what one o'clock in the morning I made, I said I'm leaving in the morning. Uh, there was already food, some dog food and some water just in the corner of my little porch. But by one o'clock in the afternoon, I, I kid you not, it was twenty five thousand dollars worth of product sitting wow. in the parking lot. I'm not kidding. Mm. And it we had seven trucks, seven trailers, and seven crews massed in five hours. It was amazing what took place. And you didn't have any of that set up in advance? No. No, that was all done in five hour period. That's incredible. The logistics that you know, God was all over that thing. I mean, I'm serious. It was crazy. And it's there's a lot to the details of what we went through to get there, but Kenny Lamaster, I mean, that night when we all pulled out of the Berkeley Plaza, Kenny Lamaster had a sheriff escort us all the way to Virginia. It was so cool. That's it, awesome. It was. We got into the southern part of West Virginia. We were running out of diesel fuel. All the trucks were running out of diesel fuel. Nobody was open. Everything was closed because of flood. So we had to wait in a parking lot at Walmart at six a to six a.m. to get diesel, and then head in. And we were told by one one person that blocked off an exit <clears throat> said, "You can't go. You can't go past here." I said, "We're going to Clendenin. That's where my friend is that I saw on Facebook. His, his house flooded." I said, we're going down there, and I, I drove on, and we ended up in Clendenin. and I'll never forget stepping out of uh, my truck. It was very much like the Mel Gibson movie of when he stepped out of that chopper, mm-hmm. when he hit that ground in Vietnam. Not And again, just a sim- similarity, my feet were in like three to six inches of mud, and I had my military boots on, and uh, we set up camp, and I got pictures of it. It, just, it was my tent, my grill, my smoker, and some equipment. Mm-hmm. generator lights and a tent and then within within a week we had 50 tents and about 300 people there serving that community and it all started with your post on facebook that's it a movie i think is we were soldiers we were soldiers i just saw that the yeah. other day yeah it's very similar and i and I, it's very it was very iconic in a time in my life you know where it was it wasn't me it was it was us it was a huge huge effort how many people were fed through that camp? Oh, thousands. Literally thousands. Yeah. And what was really cool is, you know, Danny from Vinton Welding and Marshall Wilson, and these guys would pack up their trucks and literally drive out into the country of deep West Virginia. And I'm talking, it's 110 degrees. The humidity's through the roof. I mean, Marshall be used to that, though. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's kind of used to that. He kind did of that climate. kind of missionary oh, yeah, work. He was whatever. very well, and yeah. plus being a Military. soldier. Yeah, he was in country a lot. Um, but these guys were these guys and gals literally I never forget, you know, Gina Walters and the Bob Walters sweat just drenched and they just kept going. Just kept going. I built a shower. I figured up a shower on a pallet with some uh car mats that I pulled out of a flooded car, rubber rubber floor mats, mm-hmm. made a shower, fifty gallon drum, pump, had a tarp around it in a in a bungee cord door, if you will. So people could at least take a shower and get fresh, you know, because it was sticky hot. But long hours. And um, I slept in my truck for three days just to get started. That's amazing. So you did it one time. I was thinking you had a couple of convoys down there. We did. Well, Mike, I mean, Mike Folk uh, arranged a 50-foot trailer of ice. Mm-hmm. He, he arranged that. He, he paid for it. He arranged it. You know, the network was crazy. I mean, when the National Guard showed up with their air-conditioned uh, dome tent, if you will, for people to go in and cool off. Guess what they didn't bring? Diesel fuel to run it. Oh my! Guess who had diesel fuel on site? This guy. Five hundred gallons of it because I had a military fuel cell at the time that Mike Bachinski brought down with him. I said, "Hey, we need diesel fuel because you can't get diesel fuel for miles." So Mike Mike Bachinski, my friend, hooked up my dump bed trailer, my five hundred gallon fuel cell put it in my trailer, and brought it to southern West Virginia full of fuel so we could run our generators and supply the National Guard with diesel fuel to run theirs. That's uh, crazy. Disturbing. And we fed, we fed them as well. Yeah. That We fed them food. We have pictures of it. Not that we we're bragging, but... Right, but the Guard should have diesel fuel. They should have diesel fuel. Yeah. They should have been there before us. They're basically the federal government, right? Pretty much. That's got to be Pretty something much. you got to account for. So we take a lot of pride in the fact that we were efficient. It was a... It was a I mean, being we're all, you know, a lot of us were military. Mm-hmm. Uh, we kind of know how to run things and get things going. And uh, we made it happen within just a couple of days. You're not suggesting that the citizenry might be more efficient than the federal bureaucracy, are you? Oh, absolutely. 
You're, you're going to tick off Stubblefield over there. I'm going to tell you right now. Bill's, well, I, Bill's I mean, grimace. Let's just, let's they, just call they, it like they, it is. Na- it, National we, Guard we, does some wonderful proved, stuff. Oh, they do no, wonderful we're things. We're not saying yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying they don't. But we we are better planned, better prepared, and bre- better orchestrated. If you would just let private citizens run their businesses, run their lives, it would run a lot better. We, we just – charity comes from the people. Let me bring you back to the garage, sure. Travis. Yeah, man. And tell me, how's the foot traffic over there? It's um, it's growing. You know, it's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. I think uh, obviously we're ahead of it. It's a very good concept that's ahead of its time for Martinsburg. It's a brand new concept. So I think it's going to take some time to get um, all seven days running on all the cylinders. The, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are happening that uh, that are we need more traffic Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's a numbers game. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got eight you got eight restaurants to choose from. The first three to four days of the week. Um, they're not they're not heavily trafficked, if you will. Are all of them stay open? All eight stay uh, open? There's, seven there's days a, a few week? that close a couple of days a week. Um, being a coffee shop, we're open seven days. Mm-hmm. You know, and we've I put a little post up there, and it turned into a a great uh, informative feedback, if you will. Um, we said, what do you think we need to do to be better for you guys to serve you, my coffee customers, if you will? And they said, look. You know, by eight o'clock we're we're already at work, which I get. But we tried to open at seven in the very beginning, but we got no traffic. So I'm paying a couple staff members to be there, and we have no traffic to support it. So we had to pull back and go to eight o'clock. So we did eight o'clock, and we're still there at eight, but we're getting ready to move back to six thirty, so people can come in at six thirty, get a coffee, get a treat, whatever, and then head down the road. Hey, before we let you go, yeah. two minutes left here. Let's talk about the free chicken again today, and tell sure. me, tell me, uh, let's revisit the whole thing. So anybody just <clears throat> tuning in can yeah. get a hold of it. No problem. Um, tomorrow at four o'clock at Mar- in uh, Berkeley Plaza, uh, Mountaineer Meat Smokers, we're going to give away probably about one hundred seventy-five to two hundred full birds, ready to go, fully cooked, and uh, they'll be in a Ziploc bag, two gallon, if you will, and you can take them home, and, or give them, you know, obviously give them to someone who's in need. You'll start at four. Start at four. And what and time two, do you and think first be... come, first serve, four o'clock. And what time do you stay there to to finish them all? Well, we're open tomorrow anyways for business, so we'll be there till eight. But I I have a I have a real good hunch that these will be gone in probably an hour or two. You would think, right? Uh with the with the responses we're getting, the phone calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they're going to be gone quick. And again, you you show up and we're, we're trusting your good intentions Absolutely. when you pick up the. We're not judging. We're not asking questions. Do people go inside to get these? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're telling people if you're going to pick up two or three birds or whatever for your need, um, bring a little container. Yeah, they're, they're about a three to four pound bird. So, and I've already had some of it. It's fantastic. Of course, it is. It really is. Yeah. It's, and these are fresh, freshly harvested birds. So. And while you're there, pick up one of these. <laughs> well, that's that's at the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe bring a few over with you. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. This uh, but, maple bacon bourbon bundt cake. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Which I know Bill's going to tear into during the commercial break here. He's got a knife, so I'd watch him. Travis, good to see you again, man. Hey, thanks a lot for having me, guys. I appreciate it. God bless you and the work Likewise. that you're doing, Likewise. Brother. Thank you so much for getting it out there. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Travis Bishop.